This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Out and About on Think Tech live streaming network series broadcast from our downtown studio at Pioneer Plaza in Honolulu. I'm your host, Winston Welch, and I'm delighted you're joining us today where we explore every other week a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, world, and um, everywhere in, in our minds. So that said, as a disclaimer, I just wanted to say any opinions or views expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization. With that said, joining me in the studio today is David Tasaka, and we're going to talk about David's upcoming books and life enhancement series, um, which are focusing on our health, our wealth, our love, and resulting happiness. And so with that said, I would love to welcome you to the show, David. So thank you for being my guest today. Thank you, Winston. So uh, as we were you know, talking about this, I, I, I loved following you over the years because you have such a positive energy about you. and. Uh, just your, your Facebook posts are, are always ones that are uh, interesting and one of those, I, I, I call them, I guess in this day and age, kind of a, uh, a safe page to go to. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so uh, you know about that, I, uh, do you have a philosophy about when you're, when you're posting to Facebook about what you put on there? I usually post things that help people with the three areas, uh, what I call the life triad, health, wealth, or love. Or all love. three. <laughs> the life triad. Yes. Okay, and so this triad is responsible. These are the three pegs of a triangle that, that give us a balance? or a... It's the three arenas of our lives mm -hmm. that people usually are involved in. Mm -hmm. And usually it covers most of how people live and why they do what they do. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that there's sort of overlapping circles in all of them because if you have if you have wealth but you don't have health or you don't or you have love but you don't have health and well it's in a triangle form mm -hmm. i have a graphic on my website so. okay and while we're talking about that what is your website just for so we can get that out for people it's davidtasaka.com davidtasaka.com okay mm -hmm. easy enough to remember and uh so we're excited to uh, talk about one of your first books that's coming out in this life enhancement series, uh, and I, I think your your title will um, is going to well the the theme is first going to be about health and specifically about weight is is that correct Yes Yes And what are you going to uh, call the book It's called Fat Games in a Thin World Fat Games in, in a, a Thin, thin world. world Right And yeah. wh why did you choose that title Because I have worked with over 15,000 people with weight wow. problems. And what I saw for me, because in 43 years ago, I weighed over 305 pounds. Wow. And it took me 62 weeks to lose 130 pounds. I belong to a group of 21 of us, all of whom have lost over 100 pounds. Unfortunately, within three years, I was the only one still let go away. And so I began a quest to see what happened. We all had the same food plan, the same everything. And what I learned after meeting with three of them who would meet with me was I was the only one who had made significant life changes. The rest didn't. And when you, when you say that significant life changes, so you were all on the same uh, you all had the same plan. It was a yes. program that yes. you all agreed yes. to follow yes. that that actually did result in in weight loss. Yes. And so this this was a a done deal. You'd all lost weight over the course of you said sixty something Two weeks, weeks. Yeah. sixty two weeks. So just a little over a year. And so you were dropping about, uh, let's yeah, see. Roughly two pounds a week. Two pounds a week, so, yeah. which, is, which is not an unsubstantial no, amount. No. And so you're, you're watching this fall off, and the other folks all lost this, about the same weight One in the same period. One gal had lost 170 pounds. 170 pounds. And so this is all pre-Biggest Loser. And, Everything and, before and that. All of that. This was, the unique thing is that so many of us were able to lose over 100 pounds and reach goal. 
And then you reached the goal. Yeah. But after three years, you were the only one that had kept it off. That's right. And what do you attribute? You said your life, life changes that you had made or right. permanent changes. My particular view of weight and weight problems stems from the fact that people think that food causes weight problem or lack of exercise. <clears throat> My philosophy is yes, those play a role, but the key is that how people are living is generating their weight problem. What do you mean by that, how they're living? Because uh, it, obviously, you know, we're, we have to eat to live. Right. It's not the so much the physical living, like did you exercise, did you eat a balanced meal? It's have you taken care of your needs? And these are more psycho-emotional needs. Mm -hmm. And many overweight people are eating their hearts out, trying to compensate for what they are or are not getting in life. Would you say that there's the same parallel between that and smoking or drug use? It's a little different because smoking and drug use addictions are optional with optional uh, addictive substances. We have to keep eating. We do have to keep eating. Uh, I'd, I'd say probably some smokers would say they have to keep smoking. Yeah. They, <laughs> they, might, they might snap or, or we see drug users like a heroin addicts. Yeah. The, the way that they get them, a lot of them off of heroin is to switch them to methadone, which... Yes, there, there are many technologies that have been used to help people who have life problems, physical, psychophysical, psycho-emotional. And in the arena of weight loss, it's usually come in the form of some magic diet. If you eat this particular food, product, drink this smoothie shake, the pounds will melt off. Or get this particular machine, it's going to massage your fat, the fat yes. will dissolve, and lo and behold, one day you'll show up at go weight. <clears throat> the thing is, Almost anyone can get to go away. Yes. Because go weight loss is mechanical. Maintenance is psycho-emotional. Okay, so let's say that again. Because so weight loss is mechanical. Right. Maintenance is psycho-emotional. Right. Because people have reached goal with no problem. Even though they've had to sacrifice and all these things. And what tends to happen is the further from that person's lifestyle, the system they use to reach goal weight, the less chance of their ability to maintain their weight loss because eventually it's not them. So it, for example, if I'm a, a big carnivore and I have to go on a vegan diet, yes. then, and I might, the pounds might fall off, but ultimately it's probably not going to be... Uh... Well, you have social things, like your family is carnivore. Mm -hmm. You go on the vegan. You announce, we're all going vegan. There would be a huge pushback for this. Sure. Now, how? so what changes did you specifically make or, or that you can tell us that, that resulted in you maintaining a healthy, I, I don't know, what do you call it, an ideal weight or a balanced weight? or Balanced weight or, or you know, goal weight, because mm -hmm. there's a range. The big thing that I did is I began to really live rather than exist. My life prior to my losing weight was taken up with TV, Ozzy and Harriet, and Leave it to Beaver, The Lone Ranger, Roy <laughs> Rogers. Very passive, non-involved. I was an observer to life. Mm -hmm. When I lost the weight, a part of me knew that I had to change my life. And from this, what happened was, number one, I was living at home with my parents. Mm -hmm. Something told me, you have to move out. So 
my mom was more traumatized than me because she said, how can you move out? You have never washed a load of laundry in your life. <laughs> and I remember sharing with her, I said, mom, I'm going to go to the laundromat. When I open the lid, I think there are instructions. She did not like that answer. But it was more about reclaiming my ability to be empowered and independent. Mm -hmm. At home, my mom did everything for me. She cooked, she cleaned, she washed and everything because she felt sorry for me and I did too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people play the role of victim to the max. Well, what if we're what if we're someone who says, you know, David, that's that sounds great, and I wish we had a, a mom that we said, oh yeah, we'll, we'll take care of you like that. But maybe they're they're living on their own, or they're they're in a couple, mm -hmm. or they've just had kids, and you know, they put on the baby weight, and they've tried everything, and they just said, you know, it's it's just too hard right now. I've got these kids, I I have my job. It's uh, you know, I I would like to lose the weight, but it's it's just too. Uh, my well, life is we too have busy. a term for that. Mm -hmm. It's called their fat. Act. Fat act. Right. Which means a fat excuse. Mm -hmm. And what it produces is a temporary ease of being overweight, a temporary permission to be overweight. Well, you don't know my story. And then they pour out, well, I was you know, teased, I was bullied, and so I used food to compensate. And the only question would be, okay, then where are you now? Well, didn't I tell you I was teased, I was bullied, and I was using, I said, yes, but isn't that in the past? Even if it's in current time, it's a fat act because you can change. And so it, it brings to the point, so, you know, I, I was looking at some statistics uh, from, I think it was uh, the... World Health Organization, and it says that 39% of adults age 18 and over are overweight in 2016, and 13% were obese. And of course, we're seeing childhood obesity mm -hmm. rates really growing. And you know, there's a part of this that there's some pushback that says, well, you know, if we're all just a little obese and or a little overweight, what's what's the real problem here? I mean, that's just how it is in the modern world. We're behind a desk. Uh, you know, lay off of me. I'm, I don't smoke. I, I don't gamble, you know. <laughs> it's a... Well, part of the system that really thrives on this is fat discrimination. If you look, there are hardly any fat actors and actresses unless they're comedians. Mm -hmm. There's no overweight newscasters unless they're the sports person. Which is interesting. <laughs> yes. And... There are no overweight women newscasters. They're very rare, mm -hmm. unless they've been in the business a long time. But all the ones who were the icons in this arena were thin, beautiful, so, dressed right, everything. So right. we've got fat discrimination in society, certainly. Big time. And it's one of the last... Um, it's an area that's really open to be, we can discriminate. We mm -hmm. can't discriminate on race, religion, nationality, mm -hmm. color, and, and all of those things. But we can discriminate still on, on our size. And I think it happens a lot more than we realize. Yes. Um, and like you said, even it, whether it's actors or people, models, that it's rare when we have a person of size. So um, it's... So how, how do we get over that? This is a question that I want to pick up after a break. We, mm -hmm. we have to take a short break, and I'd okay. like to talk more about some of the other books that you're coming up with as well. Okay. But um, anyway, this is Winston Welch, and it's out and about on ThinkTech live streaming network series, and we are talking with David Tasaka. So we'll be back in a minute or so, so stay tuned for more of the story. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music.
chance that I could play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Hey, we're back and we're live. I'm Winston Welch, and this is Out and About on Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series, talking with David Tasaka on his upcoming book series, Life Enhancements. And the first book title is called Fat Games, Games in a Thin, Thin World. World. We were just talking about discrimination in, in fat people. And during the break, we were talking about how we, we don't see, and just before the break, how we don't see fat people on in TV as models, that it's the exception, real exception rather well, than the Well, if you look, there are no role models for overweight people being winners. And so, your goal is to get people to a healthy weight. So how My does... goal, I think, is to help people really reclaim their personal power. Okay. Because most people think, well, I'm losing weight to get healthy. And that's true. But what I found, weight maintenance is really about reclaiming your personal power so that you naturally redesign, reprogram a life that supports you as a thinner person. And it's too, it's, it's because we can, that we will have a happier life when we're a, a healthier the, life and that's it's part of that? The big thing used to be that healthy, happy were the terms. And there was a push on having fat, you can be fat and still healthy, and there's just been a recent study that shows that's not true. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that even sometimes thin people can be fat on the inside as well. Right. So the, the arena of fat is a big commercial adventure mm -hmm. because if you look at it, weight loss systems succeed when their clients fail. Right. Yeah. Because what happens if a person got to go and never had to go back again. The companies are going to go out of business. Right. So they need a constant stream of people. But you know, I, I've, I've often said that it's, it's really a challenge to not be overweight in our society. Really a challenge. We're sitting behind screens for eight, nine, ten hours a day. Mm -hmm. We're, our, our diets are laden just with artificial things, high fat, fake foods. Even if we're eating a healthy diet, we're still not getting out there and, and burning off the calories, the mechanics of calories in and calories out. So how does this, how do we tap into a system that's going to allow us to, to lose weight and to reclaim the sense of ourselves and, and empowerment? I have a term called making friends with food, mm -hmm. meaning that every food is your friend. It just depends on the quantity and the preparation. Chocolate and candy is not bad, but if you eat a pound of chocolate and a pound of candy, that's not so good. When you tell people they cannot have something, there is a natural inclination to feel like deprivation is at hand. Sure. So that becomes the issue. Then your book is going to, it, it, it obviously has some mechanical... Um, we actually are having some evolutionary approaches to weight loss. And I call it the Omni System of Dieting. Tell us about that. The Omni System of Dieting is where the reader can choose their particular food plan, exercise plan, that is a good fit for their life, their family, their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That way, they choose, and they can choose again. We give them complete freedom to choose. That's not the area where we want to focus on. Mm -hmm. The analogy is we're providing the fuel for the vehicle, the weight loss vehicle, to reach goal. Everybody else is selling vehicles. I see. So you're so you have the the mechanical part of it is saying you figure it out yourself. 
you already well, we'll probably, have guidance with guidance but here's inside of this in our omni system you already know what's going to or they, you, you can we, find out what works working for you. with weight loss veterans right. some for decades that know uh, that know uh, know, know about everything. this but then your your main focus is going to be on the motivation motivation and that's the fuel because if you are motivated you will get to go Without motivation, you could be in, in a clinic, you could be in a starvation system, you're not going to do it. You know, it's interesting because as we were talking about, so, so your main focus in these, in these series is, is sort of the psycho-emotional, exactly. spiritual, behind the physical manifestation. It's, the greatest thing is you can have a Ferrari as your vehicle for getting to go away, but without fuel, a person could be walking next to the car, they'll be to, to go away. So as we are getting fatter as a society, mm -hmm. and I, I know I personally, I just, as soon as I hit 30, it was like 10 pounds a year and mm -hmm. another inch on the way. So I thought, oh, it just sort of happened. Is there a psycho, social, emotional, spiritual component behind our entire society that is, that is underlying this, that, that is beyond the food industry and beyond sitting behind a screen? I think the main thing that I found is the phrase, loving the self. Mm -hmm. People who are overweight have not found a way to love themselves in a constructive and healthy way. So food becomes the default system they use fast easy and cheap fast easy and cheap and would you say that that also applies to other areas of of life as well uh, that that you found it spills over because these are life system not just weight system so if a person is in the arena of looking for love if you don't love yourself how do you expect another person to love you Yes, but how does one learn to love oneself in a, in a world where sometimes there's a... a, a... That's the, the other key is there are systems that are omni-system because the key is when people are given the freedom to choose mm -hmm. with guidance, then their chance of succeeding increase tremendously because it is their proprietary system. It may not work for anybody else, but it works for them. I love this idea. So the Omni system, it's empowering the individual within a, a, a loose framework to choose mm -hmm. what is appropriate for him or her uh, to succeed. And the key is to trust yourself. So the question I usually ask clients to ask is, would a loving person eat this for their body? Mm -hmm. And then listen. Most people don't even listen. They're, they're consuming. And usually, the answer is the truth. But it's a lot of the times we're not listening to that. That's right. That inner voice that says. So it's tuning in. It's tuning in and then being aware of. I was listening to a tape by Louise Hay, who mm -hmm. I, I just absolutely love. Uh, the dear, uh, recently departed. Mm -hmm. from this plane of existence, Louise Hay, and I recommend all of her, her books mm -hmm. at Hay House, uh, but she has a 101 Power Thoughts. And, but one of the things that she had said a few years ago was, um, would you give this to a baby? Mm. And I've always thought, that's really um, interesting, because of course, if we naturally um, would, you wouldn't give a baby alcohol or cigarettes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or Cheetos, um, and not to not to bash Cheetos, I do love Cheetos, but a baby, w w what would you feed a baby that would be healthy and appropriate for... for... Well, I love Louise Hay also. <clears throat> I feel that that arena is, has been fantastic. But where I feel that it's sort of, when the rubber hit the road, the long-term results did not really produce the, what the person really wants. And the, the one thing is in money. In money. I, I'll affirm, I am a you know, I'm millionaire, yes. I, uh, money comes to me and all. Affirming is good, but it's what I call doing and producing measurable results 
is where the rubber really hits the road because without measurable results, it's just a lesson in vocabulary in the mind. So that's, that's, those are two other areas that are going to be part of this life mm -hmm. enhancement series, which, so we have health and with the initial focus on, on, on weight, on ideal weight, mm -hmm. maintaining that, choosing from an omni, an uh, omni diet system. And, yeah. and then as, the, as the, the vehicle for us to make our own wisest choices within a, a, a good framework, and then working on the psychosocial mm -hmm. um, and self-empowerment uh, and aspects behind that. Mm -hmm. But this also goes over into your other two areas of focus, which is money mm -hmm. and, I guess, wealth, and in, also into love. And I like the, the phrase that, um, that you had, which was uh, looking for love in all the right places and uh, for your for the part about love <laughs> encapsulating, yeah. which is great, and for for wealth, which is was it frugal without sacrifice? Yes. So that we can be we can achieve some financial health without a sacrifice. Many people are approaching life situations almost completely broke, and the statistics are staggering that over 50% of people will reach retirement with, with nothing, with no saving. And that is a t really important topic that I would love to explore in depth <laughs> on our next show because unbelievably we are out of time, but I would love to invite you back to, to talk about to that. And your, your books are going to be coming out in maybe in January, we hope. Um, it'll be a Kindle books. It'll be all virtual books. Virtual books, so we can go to davidtosaka.com. Right. And that's where we can find some more information on the Life Enhancement Series, Models of Self-Empowerment for Health, Wealth, and Love, which leads to our happiness and satisfaction here in life. And I really look forward to, to continuing this conversation because I'd it be, does hit I'd on these happy to. Really fundamental happy. areas. And looking at it from... Uh, are your, your many decades of experience and having success in these areas yourself. So you're speaking really from experience mm -hmm. and, and knowledge of, of thousands of people. And so I really appreciate you coming down on the show today. Thank you for having me. So unfortunately, I can't believe it. <laughs> this is a very, very fast period of time, and we didn't have enough time even to cover this one, but uh, we do have to wrap it up today. And my name is Winston Welch. This is Out and About on ThinkTech live streaming network series. And we've been talking with David Tasaka on his upcoming life series uh, enhancements book and look forward to much more of this in the future. Thank you for tuning in and welcome. we welcome your feedback. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, Ian Davidson, our technical producer, Ray Sengalang, our floor manager, Robert McLean, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer. I'll see you here every other Monday at three for more of Out and About on ThinkTech. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>